Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'm continuing this series of uh, relationship. It's a relationship series with our Most High Elohim. We are going over things to give you the understanding of how you have a relationship with the Most High. Because a lot of y'all say that you know the Most High God. But you don't understand the error of your ways, the reasons why we are still in captivity, and all the things that we're going through is because you don't understand your Elohim. All y'all talking about, oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. And you're being stressed out every day. You're in the worst part of the community. You know, majority of us is not living in the, in the established neighborhoods where the grass is green and there are big houses and you got all kinds of resources that you can just go on vacation and stay six weeks and come back and your rent ain't, is still paid and your, your lights ain't shut off and all that stuff. Matter of fact, those people are not paying rent. You know, they, they, have, they have standards that they say that you should, you should have at least six months to a year, year's salary saved up. How many of us in Israel have that? Those people that's in those communities that you're not in, they do. They can afford to lose their job today and don't have to worry about being homeless tomorrow. You can't. We can't. This is, this is the relationship that you don't have with the Most High Elohim because he gave it to them out of, out of jealousy because the fact is, you are the people that he, he has established a relationship with. We're going over that today. And the fact is, I'm going to continue this path to, to, to let you guys know the, the relationship that you have with the Most High God is all a pipe dream. You don't have a relationship. Most of you don't have a proper relationship with the Most High God because you don't even know what He wants. You don't even know what He is to you. The name, the day's topic is the Most High God's name is jealous. All the things that you guys are doing, you're doing things to make Him jealous. His name is Jealous, and I'm going to show you the things that he does to, to, to you when you provoke him to jealousy. He tells you in the scripture that his name is Jealous. All right, in order to correctly ap approach this topic, we have to first prove that our Elohim formed a relationship with us. I mean, when I say us, I mean Israel and only Israel. And we with him. The nation of Israel formed the relationship with the Most High God. And a, con a, a, a contract, an everlasting covenant with, with a most powerful Elohim. But you know what? Just like we are today, we were then when we were establishing that, that, that contract, that agreement. Because most of you Negroes today, y'all y'all give a lot of a mouth that, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Man, I, I, you, you will swear to God, and I swear to God, man, I'll do this. I'm going to help you out. Number lip service. As soon as you make that agreement, you violate it. That's why most of y'all credit score is jacked up right now. Because the fact is, y'all get in these, these agreements and stuff, and don't know how to keep it. And next thing you know, your life is jacked up because your credit score is jacked up. You can't get nothing on credit. You, then you jack your children's credit credit up because you got to put all that kind of stuff in their names. And by the time they turn 18 and want to get out the house and, 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 and get an apartment and all that stuff, they got bad credit. Because you don't jack your credit up and all of your kids' credit up. I'm not telling you, I'm not lying. My mother did it to us. 
you know, parents, the people in the neighborhood do that. Put it in their kids' name. Put the light bill in one of their kids' name. Put the, put the, uh, uh, you know, they they just throw throwing bills in their children's names. All right, let's let's prove that the Most High God made a relationship, established a covenant with Israel. We're gonna have to first establish this this relationship to show you that it has nothing to do with no other nation but ours. That's why we're in the condition we're in because we don't understand the jealousy of our Elohim. All right, Exodus 24 and 2 through, I'm going to do 24, 2 through 8. Alex, read. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with them. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said we will do. Okay, so... When Moses went up into the into the mount, and he sat with the Most High God, and the Most High God gave him laws, statutes, and commandments, and Moses came back down, read it to the people, and everybody, like you lying Negroes of the day, oh, the Most High God said, we're going to do. Yeah, we, you know, I probably was in that congregation myself, lying my butt off, because, you know, I ain't doing none of that stuff. That's 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 the uh, uh, the the phase and idea that most of you, you Negroes have today. Hey, and when I say Negroes, I'm not just talking about the so-called blacks. I'm talking about the Hispanics. You Negroes too, and the Native Indians. Y'all Negroes too, because you come from the same seed, Jacob, my forefather, your forefather. All right, we agreed to the words of the Most High God. Continue. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. Rose up early in the morning. Building an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, so this alone tells you exactly who who this relationship was going to be established with. He built what, Alex? Again, read that. And, and build it. And building an altar under the hill. Okay, he built the altar to worship. And twelve pillars. Twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. That's who he built. That's who the relationship was being established with. All right, come on. And he said, "Young men of the Lord." Of the young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. So young, the, the children of Israel. Did, did he ask any of the children of Ammon to, to make sacrifices of the children of Esau? Was this, did, did he do that, Dominic? Did, he, did any of the children of uh, Ammon and Esau and Moab was making uh, an Elam and, and all uh, and all the children of Keturah, were they, were they out there making sacrifices to the Most High? No. But who was it? The Hebrews, I guess. Well, we can say the Hebrews. Well, he, he's right to say Hebrews because in, in Exodus 7 and I think 15 or 16, he said, I'm the God of the Hebrews. Let my people go. Only the people of, of Israel was in captivity. So, yeah, the Hebrews. The people. Israel, the nation. All right. Okay, uh, 24 and 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Okay, he put half of the blood in basins. What are you going to do with that during blood? And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. So it, it's showing that he took the blood that, that the young men of Israel was making sacrifices to. He took half of that blood that they was making sacrifice because they killed a lot of animals. Took half of it to put it in basins, and he he sprinkled half of the blood on the altar. This is something very important that is about to happen because any covenant that the Most High God makes, it's gonna be a blood required. Okay, come on. Okay. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, "All that the Lord has said, we will do. Okay, be obedient." This is us right there. We agreed to everything that was read unto us, all the things that the Most High God said we're going to do, and we're going to be obedient. And half of them in their heart, probably at that time, maybe including myself, knew, knew that we were lying, that we were going to be obedient. Because we had the, the, we had the gods of Egypt in our front pocket. Even when Ezekiel came, we still had Egypt on our mind. The gods of Egypt. 
And that was like 890 years later. Or something like that, 840 years later, if it's, it's some astronomical number, we still was worshiping the gods of Egypt during that time. Years later. But we, here we are saying, we're going to be obedient. All right. All right, come on. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. That blood covenant right there, when he threw that blood on us, that's it. When he threw that blood on us, that was it. That was it. All of, all the words that the, the, the Most High God spoke, we gonna do, and then he and he threw that blood on us. That was a covenant. This this is not this is not a, a, a covenant that you made with the credit card people to use their credit and pay the bill back. There's some rep, repercussions behind that too. This is not the covenant that you made with your renters that. You're going to pay the rent every, every, in 30, the first day of the month and give you fifth, a five-day grace period. The Most High God gives you grace too, but that ain't the type of covenant. You're his now. To obey him, to walk like him, because the laws he gave you gave you the ability to walk just like he walked, to do the things to make you his. Okay. Relationship established. This proves that the Most High God created a blood covenant with the children of Israel. Only the children of Israel. How did the Most High God see this relationship? I'm going to show you how he saw the relationship he had established with us. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Jordan. Turn, O oh backsliding Israel, children. I'm going to read that again. Turn, O oh backsliding children. Said the Lord, for I am married unto you. He felt he saw it as, as a relationship of marriage. Come on. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. I will bring you to Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. See, when you are in a relationship of marriage, there's a covenant. There are laws that you have that, that you establish between your spouse. But when you establish a relationship with the Most High God in marriage, He gave you His rules, His law. He's married unto us. He gave us His rules, His laws. In the relationship, in the marriage, in the covenant. The Most High God is married unto the nation of Israel. When your spouse cheats on you, will that make you upset? Will it make you upset? Especially when you are given the law, when you gave your, your spouse the law, these are the things that, babe, that I require that you to do in this marriage. She knows the things, and, and I'm supposed to know the things. You can't be going out with this guy and that guy and, and that guy and bring them up. Hey, I want you to meet Jamil. You know, yeah, I met him at the bar today, you know. Oh, Jamil, you just gonna be here for a minute. You can go home, right? Yeah, he gonna go home. Oh, my, my husband don't care. He don't understand. Oh, he ain't jealous. No. Just like our name could be called jealous, the most high God admits it. He said, my name is jealous. You cheating on me, and you I'm just sitting there watching. Oh, he don't mind. I'll just reestablish the covenant the way I want to see it, the way I see it, from my heart. In my heart, this is how I believe. No, most High God didn't give you that imagination. You gave that to yourself. He didn't give you that from my heart imagination stuff. Everything he wants you to do, he wrote it in this Bible. Now, we got some Hebrews and some... Israelites adding different things to the to to the doctrine, but that that's that's not according to the Most High God. I'm going by the things that He declared in this Bible. Until they prove to me otherwise, this is the only thing I'm gonna worry about is the Word of the Most High God. No doctrines. I don't care if it's Baptist. I don't care if it's Israelite. Israelite have doctrines too. 
So I, I don't go by none of that other stuff. All right. Let's let's go Exodus 34 and 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a co covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Oh, my God. Mm. See, this is one of the things that the Most High God warned us. Take heed to thyself. Yeah, we don't make covenants with everybody in the land, and that is the reason why we are in the captivity and all going through all of the hell that we're going through right now. Because the covenant that we made with the inhabitants of the land is more important than the covenant we made with the Most High God. And it has become a snare. What's a snare? A trap. A trap. That's, that's what it's become, a trap to us. We're in traps right now. Because everything is more important. Man, you're going to do Halloween? You trick or treat? You're going to send your kids out to trick or treat? What you going to dress your kids up for, Yes. What y'all cooking for Thanksgiving? What you going to give your kids for Christmas? Are you going to, are you going to, uh, are you going to deck, deck your house out and stuff? You gonna bring that Christmas tree in your house? Hmm. Unless it becomes a snare. Go the traps. Come on. 13. 34 13. Exodus. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. He ain't saying nothing no different. So don't, right now we don't we don't have control, so we, we can't be running around destroying people's altars and cutting down their groves at this point. But when, when we were in control. We were supposed, we were commanded to do that, but we didn't. Come on. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous. What? Jealous. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous. No, wait a minute. What did he say his name was? Whose name is Jealous. He said his name is Jealous. Come on. He's a jealous God. He said, my name is Jealous. So y'all doing this stuff, my name is Jealous, and I'm a jealous God. Could anybody explain what he that that just meant? What he meant? Um, when he says his name is jealous. He's saying like, like not everybody can just say his name. Like, because if you're gonna say his name, then you like you better make, like you you say you say his name. Hmm. That's 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 not at all, but I, I'll I'll accept it. Jordan, what do you think he said? He said there. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna give you a scenario. Okay, I'm gonna give y'all a scenario right here. Dealing with y'all three, my three sons. Say, for instance, when Dominic turns 21. Okay, when Dominic turns 21, I buy him a sports car. I buy Jordan a sports car. And I buy you a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I got the money to buy you a sports car too, but I just buy you a bicycle. But... You gonna be like, thanks, Dad. That was cool. I appreciate that. Even though it's a gift, you think how you gonna feel about that? No, no. Just, just, no I'm just saying, how you gonna feel about it? Hurt. Hurt. You'll be ready to tear these two cars up. I ain't getting no darn car. Man, I'm gonna tell you what. He gonna have sugar in his gas tank, and I'm gonna pee in his. <laughs> I'm going to mix his with some special gas. <laughs> if I don't get a car, not it today. None of, none, none of y'all. Y'all going to be selling those cars for bicycles too. Because they're going to be so jacked up. The person going to be like, man, look. I'll give you this bicycle. Yeah, look, gonna, I, I'll trade it. I'll give you a mountain bike for it. That's all I can give you, man. Because this car is jacked up. I'm going to have to rebuild the whole motor, transmission shot. You know, I don't know who did it to your car, but it, <laughs> it, it, it ain't no good. You could be able to sit in it, sleep in it. You ain't going to be able to drive it. I don't know who did this. Whoever did this doesn't like you. Well, I, I suspect our brother did it because my daddy bought us two cars and he didn't get a, he got there but a bicycle. 
Well, that's what y'all finna get now, cause <laughs> this is all I can give you. I, I can, I can, I can uh, uh, get to, you know sell the parts on it, but that's it. You take this money and get you a bicycle too. All y'all riding bikes. Oh my God, it's that way. You get a bike. You get a bike. See, the fact is, he's that way. He said his name is Jealous to see all the things that we are doing. And I'm going to tell you, he is just burning with jealousy. And But the fact is, every time you burn with jealousy, something happens. When your spouse tell, says that name is Jealous, should you be cautious enough not to cheat? Or would you acknowledge an agreement that you never plan to keep? You know, I ain't, you know, we're gonna get married, but no, I ain't promising you nothing. I ain't keeping no covenants with you because I ain't, you know, that ain't what I do. If I see somebody I wanna smash, and, yeah. Hey baby, I'm uh go out with my boys and turn off my phone. In other words, I'm smashing the night. The most I told us what would happen when we provoked him to jealousy. The most I got, he didn't just leave everything off and didn't tell us what was going to happen. Y'all provoked me to jealousy. I'm going to tell you what. This is what I'm going to do to you. Let's get Deuteronomy 32 and 16. All right. All right. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. What abomination provoked they him to anger? We provoked the Most High God to jealousy, cheating on him with other gods, and abominations such as homosexuality, eating unclean foods, women in pants, men in dresses, fornication, etc. The Bible tells you what is an abomination in this Bible. He said, what abomination provoked they him? We provoked him to jealousy, worshiping all these other gods, and with abominations. With all the things that he considered abomination, and he said that they were abomination, all these fornications that he said were abomination, all this unclean food that is abominations, all the all the things, uh, all the acts that he told us that were abominations unto us, unto him. He, we provoking him to jealousy right now. Come on, and with the abominations. Come on, they sacrifice on the devils, mm. not to God, mm. to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up. When your father, you're not. See, when those, these are all the things that the Most High God showed to Moses, how we would provoke him to jealousy. All these gods, all these gods on the calendar, because the fact is, Halloween, those are strange gods, devils. You know, Thanksgiving, strange gods. Christmas, strange gods. You know, then it's Christianity and Islam. These are new gods because Islam was established in the 600s. No, it's 500. Christianity around four, four, the, four, the fourth century. So, so the fact is, we, we didn't know these gods. Because Esau was not in control at the, because Christianity is the God of Esau. When they took over the church, they established this Christianity. Islam is, is the God of uh, Ismael. They established these gods and, and they put them, them over us. All right, come on. So the wrong that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Yeah, because the fact is, right now, today, we are, we are unmindful today. We rather stay in Christianity even when we hear this truth. We were to stay in Islam even when we hear this truth. We are unmindful. We forgot who formed us. Come on. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred it. He abhorred them. He hated us. When he saw it and he's seeing you being told the truth, you, you get no love from him because he gave you, he given you an out. Come on. Because of, pro of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Because you are his sons and daughters. Come on. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children of whom is no faith. Mm. Come on. They have moved me to jealousy, that with, is, that with which is not God. Mm. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. 
I'll provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. That's, that's why Esau and all these other nations have all the blessings that were given to us in the beginning. Because he said he's going to provoke us to jealousy with a foolish nation. And I can't, I can't see other, no other nation more foolish than this nation that's on top right now. I really can't. You know, I, I, I really can't. Because of all the nations that are out there that, that, that are, were, uh, of a ruling power at one time, this one here is the most foolish nation that has been in power. So what makes this Bible so true is that the nation that's presently ruling, you know, when Babylon was in rulership, they at least had some semblance of righteousness. Because when they saw the power of the, of the God of Daniel, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, or whatever that name they called Daniel's uh, friends, they at least repented and saw the righteousness and say, don't nobody, they can't, they, no, if you try to make them bow down, I'm going to kill you and kill all your family. So the fact is, I, I, don't, I don't see no other nation that would, had rulership that did not acknowledge the Most High Elohim. This is one. This is this just one of the foolish nations right here. All right, come on. Okay, there you twenty-two. Fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire of the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon you, upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. So the Most High God is saying, "I'm going to be the one heaping mischief upon you." Like that, like that, uh, that age crisis, <laughs> that was mischief heaped upon us by the Most High God. That crack cocaine epidemic, that was mischief heaped upon us by the Most High God. Like when Black Wall Street burned down because we still trying to imitate the heathen, that was mischief. Every time we did something great, did the Most High God heap mischief upon us? He was the one shooting arrows at us. He's telling you in this Bible, but y'all ain't listening. Y'all are still being under the under the guise of witchcraft and all of that other stuff, sorcery that has been put over you, because you're not seeing these things. And the, and the thing and the fact is, those things that you don't see are the things that are destroying us today. All right, come on. Okay. Um, twenty-four. Twenty-four. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with a burning heat. And bitter destruction. I also send the teeth of beast upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy mm. both the young man and the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hairs. Mm. It, it looks, listen to that. The sword without and terror within. What could those two things be? The sword without, Jordan, and the terror within. Look at our neighborhoods today. And, 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 and explain that. The sword without. Look at the hood today. The sword without. What could be considered the sword without in the hood? The cops. The cops. And the terror within. Who the terror within? The gangs. The gangs. Most like God is telling you what he's going to do to you. They're going to be destroying you from without. And the sword within. Your own people. Shall destroy both the young men because the young men are the ones getting destroyed in these games in the cops. Why didn't he say the old men first? Both the young man and the virgin. The virgin don't mean some woman that ain't never had sex. What a virgin mean? A female. Unmarried woman. That's what a virgin meant during this time. It is taking on a new definition now, and she's a virgin. But it is, it's an unmarried woman in Israel. Uh, uh, during that time, yeah, virgins didn't supposed to be one to have sex, but a virgin is an unmarried woman. The suckling also with the man of gray hair. So they're going to touch everybody. All right, come on, 26. Okay. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Okay. It, did that happen? Yes. Does anybody know that we are the Israelites other than the, the, who they think are the, are the Jews now? The Jewish. Oh, white people. Yeah, they think the white folks are Jews. 
I remember it's uh, uh, no longer, you know, they they giving they they saying that you know uh, the Germans and all these stuff are, are, are tribes and stuff, you know. All right, come on. Um, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, "Our handle, our hand is high, and the Lord has not done all this." Mm -hmm. This is what the, our enemies are saying right now because their hand is high. But they are a nation of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. That oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider this their latter end. No, we didn't consider none of this. We didn't consider our end. So the most high God left details of us cheating on him and the things he would do to us when we cheated. Now, if if y'all hadn't got under the guise and under the sorcery of, of, of your enemy who told you that the law is done away with, because they created this religion. Fed it to you throughout slavery. Now y'all just so dumbfounded with it that y'all feeding yourself. It like you know you're feeding yourself slop. Don't look back in this book. The Most High God in His relationship with us is angry with us because we are doing these things, and He told us back then that these are the things He's gonna do to you when you messed up and cheated on Him. Y'all still ain't looking to try to get the, your relationship right with the Most High God, and y'all think y'all know the Most High. Boy, I'm going to tell y'all, you, you don't know your Elohim. You don't even know how to walk right before him. You don't know him. You don't know your Elohim because this white man has hoodwinked you, fooled you to make you believe that this Old Testament is irrelevant, making you lawless because in the Old Testament are the laws. And because you lack law in your knowledge, you are the most lawless people upon the block. And it's the reason why no other nation wants you around them because of your lawlessness. They don't want you around them because you are lawless because you don't want to adhere to your own laws. This Bible is your law book. This is why nobody wants you around them. No other nation. You move in, they move out because they understand the lawlessness you are in. You don't obey your own law, so how are you going to obey theirs? Y'all come up with this foolishness, snitches get stitches, and stuff like that. That's foolish. That's called lawless, lawlessness. Y'all without laws. All right. Let me read that again. The Most High God left details of us cheating on him and the things he would do to us when we cheated. The problem is, most of you claim to know your Elohim, but you have no clue that you are provoking him to jealousy every day. Let's get Joshua 24, 17, and 18, and 19. No, just go through 20 to 20. Joshua 17. Joshua 24, 17 to 20. Dominic, I'm going to let you read. <clears throat> For the Lord our God, he it is that brought, up, brought us up and our father out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Okay, so what is he talking about, Dominic? He's talking about the slavery in Egypt. Speak up, I can't hear you. He's talking about the slavery in Egypt? Yeah, so we're, we, we, we're, um, he's... Joshua is here the, uh, establishing the relationship and identifying who the Most High God brought up out of Egypt. Who did, who he bring up out of Egypt? Us. Who is us? The Israelites. How many tribes? Twelve. Twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, come on. From, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in their sight, and preserved us all us in all the ways that we're in, we went. And among all the people through whom we passed. Our Elohim delivered us out of slavery, showing great signs, and protected us everywhere we went, throughout the, in the wilderness. Come on. And the Lord drew out from He drove, so he drove out. Come on. Drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwell in the land. Therefore, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. 
While we worship the Most High God, he drove many powerful nations out of the land, including the Amorites, who was a powerful, powerful nation. Come on. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is jealous God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Joshua was giving the Israelites a warning. If you can't serve the Holy One of Israel in righteousness, he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. You're not going to be forgiven if you can't serve him and you're just out there doing all kind of wickedness. Because at this time, there was no grace. Come on. Joshua 24 and 20. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt, do you hurt and consume you. After that, he has done you good. Knowing that the Most High God would <coughs> do you hurt when you serve other gods, would you serve them? If you knew that the Most High God would do you hurt. Now, all the time you've been righteous and you've been serving him. Then you decide you want to backslide and start serving other gods. And you know the consequences of it, that he's going to do some hurt to you. Would you do it? Because the fact is, none of y'all know that the Most High God is going to do you hurt because y'all serve other gods every day. These are the things in your book that you fail to look back in. You can't, you can't uh, walk around all this time with all this technology around, but y'all doing it for the wrong reason. And I understand these things in, in your Bible, in your book. This is why I know most of you don't know your Elohim. You don't know your Most High God. Because if you knew serving him and, and, and then transgressing and serving other gods, knowing that he's going to do some hurt to you, you wouldn't do this. Because you, you would know, man, punishment finna come. He's not going to forgive me for that. You know, me bringing this Christmas tree in my house, most of God is not going to, he, he going to punish me for that. If you knew he was going to punish you, you wouldn't do that. Because you're going to be scared. You will be afraid. I'm afraid. You know, you bring a Christmas tree in my house, you won't get past the front door. I'm not letting you in. Hey, man, it's a Christmas tree. Well, you better get that damn thing off my porch. That, that's that's going to be my, 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 my uh, what do you mean get off your porch? Get that damn thing off my porch. I don't I do not do Christmas and nobody in my house do Christmas. So you can take that stuff on the, across the street or somewhere else. It's not, you know, give us one of the heathens over there. <laughs> Look at Psalms 78, start at 58 to to, to 66. All right. All right. When God heard this, he was wrong. Wait a minute. Psalm 78, 58. 59. Oh, okay. 58. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. Okay. Come on. What that means? But, okay, I'm going to tell you this. By the time this lesson is over, you would understand that provoking the Most High God to jealousy is not to your benefit. But explain that. With their high places, what their high places are? Skyscrapers. Mm -mm. During, during that time, the high places... During that time, the high places are places of worship. Where you go to worship in your high places and what else? <coughs> graven images. And they're graven images. The images that they put in these high places of worship. Okay, come on. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel. He hated us. See, this is this is continually as far as in Deuteronomy 32, same thing. When he saw this, he hated them. He didn't say he hated it. He hated the sin. No, he said he hated them. So when, when the Most High God see you on high places worshiping other gods and bringing graven images into the place, he hates you. When somebody, when your, when your spouse is so angry at you that they hate you, I'm going to tell you, 
in my wickedness and back in the time when I was being wicked, you know, I used to cheat on women and they found out. And when you and when they find out, I'm gonna tell you, that is a, a, a small degree between love and hate. Person can hate you, Alan, would you please stop that? Put that rubber bit, that, that thing down. Uh people can hate you more than they can love you. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell you like this. If if I if I if I did this craziness to my wife and she found out, she gonna hate me. She probably still love me, but she gonna hate the hell out of me. And I don't know what they would, after all of these 22, 23 years of, of marriage and stuff, that that's gonna be on, on, on it's gonna be on balance. Because it can go either way. It can go to the right or to the left. You think just think about what the most high God is saying. He's seeing you cheating on him, and he's hating you. And and you're just gonna say, Oh, you just ask God for forgiveness and that's all. Uh -uh. Just like you got to grovel back to your wife. Uh, 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 you know, when, when you women cheat on your man, most men ain't going to accept you back. And you got to grovel back to your husband. Some of them will. Who do you think the most high God is, is like that in his hatred? When he hating you. Oh, just ask him, just tell him I'm sorry. That's it. Just just say I'm sorry. And go out and do it again. Lord, I'm sorry. Go out and do it again. Lord, I'm sorry. Go out and do it again. And he hating you. He still hates you the first time. You know, it doesn't make any darn sense. You saying you're sorry every time you do it. I'm going to tell you. I'm just trying to get y'all to understand your relationship with your most high Elohim. And, and you tell me, is this making sense? Or what you think is making sense? Because the fact is, the stuff that y'all is, is outside of the, the, the logic. Because Most High God made us in His image. He thinks like us. No, we think like Him. If we get jealous, He definitely gets jealous. Jordan, stop. And the fact is, He definitely gets jealous. And He hating you, and you just saying, "I'm sorry," and not remain, and not meaning any of it because. You, you, you have all intentions to go out and do the same thing again? All right. Okay, continue. We have verse 60. 60. So that he forsook the tabernacles of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men. This, this is when we refer to, to, the, to the northern kingdom because this was their temple. And delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. Okay, so he delivered us. He delivered his strength into captivity which is is his children. He put us in captivity, captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. So he put us into the enemy's hand. When in, in history did an entire nation of people go into slavery? I can tell you a few. This was one of them. During, during the Babylonian captivity, the entire nation of Judah went into slavery. He gave his people over also unto the sword. It was wrong with his inheritance. Oh, he, he killed a lot of us. He was upset. Now, see, when he gets upset with us, a lot of y'all going to die. A lot of us died. A lot of us of the nation died. See, this, this is not an individual type of, of religion. This is a nation religion. It ain't a religion. It's a nation covenant. Covenant of a nation. So when a nation of people were acting a certain way, he put that whole nation in slavery. You know, the Chinese, yeah, they went into slavery, but not the whole nation of China. Japanese, not the whole nation. All right, come on. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given to marriage. <clears throat> their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Hmm. Then the Lord. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me. You don't jump the head too far. All right, come on. Then the Lord awaked as one out of sleep, and like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine. The Most High God would still choose Israel as soon as one third of Israel awake out of sleep. 
Come on. And he smote his enemies in the hinder parts. He put them to a, a perpetual reproach. For cheating in the marriage to the Most High God, he not only would give you over to the sword, place you into captivity, but also send the storm, the winds, volcano, eruptions, fire, etc. after you. Jordan, Nahum. Wait a minute. Yeah, Nahum 1, started, uh, 1 verse 2 through 1 verse 6. Come on. God is jealous, and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Most High God is jealous. As Joshua said, you serve other gods, you do it to your hurt and to your consumption. See, the fact is, when the Most High God say he's jealous, that's going to be some vengeance coming, coming after you. This is not going to say, oh, I'm jealous and that's it. Oh, I'm just jealous. Oh, the Most High God got jealous over there. That's all. No, when he when he gets jealous, there are things that are going to happen to you. I'm telling you like this. Things going to happen. Things that have happened. All right. Come on. Verse 3. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. In the clouds are the dust of his feet. Just because you don't get stumped out right away, the Most High will not acquit the wicked. The Most High has his way in the in the tornadoes and the storms. He moves the clouds around to destroy the wicked. So when them hurricanes come and destroy your house, destroy all your property, when them, when, when them hurricanes come and flood out your house, and, and destroy destroy wickedness in cities. You know these are not incidents. These are these are things done by the Most High God. When the Most High God came uh, and, and and basically went up all of, all of Florida, stepping out wickedness as he went. During during uh, during uh, what, Harvey during, uh, Houston and all of that that area around there, hurricanes hit Puerto Rico and all of those islands. Those are where our people are. Most like God say he's jealous, and, and like I said, I'm gonna tell you when the truth get to these areas, and the truth has gone to these areas, and and, and people. It, it by majority still don't want to stand up and be righteous and, and look at their look at look at what these prophets and people are telling them as as wicked stupidity and keep doing the, the stupid things they are even though all, all of this stuff makes sense to them and, and understanding the fact that a lot of the stuff that these prophets were saying it it, it it talks about them and they continue being wicked and doing the, the same stupidity. And the next thing you know, the Most High God come and just destroy the whole island like Puerto Rico. <coughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, there's there's some, there's like I'm saying, think it not to be a coincidence. That's, that's a warning and a half for you. All right. Uh, verse 4. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry. And dryeth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and and oh. Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. He causes tidal waves, flooding, and he causes drought. So the Most High God does all of these things. You know, tornadoes, floods, tidal waves, volcanic eruptions, everything. Come on. Verse five. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt. And the earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. The Most High causes earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. This is all done in his hand. Come on. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is powered out like fire. And the rocks are thrown down by him. Because nobody can control those volcanic eruptions. You can't control where those tornadoes are going to sit down at. You can't t control those hurricanes. Who can control that? God. Who who could who could stop that when it when it when it decides it want to want to come and wipe you out? 
that's nothing that hot, hot enough to, to, to keep a, a molten lava from running all over and just destroying everything in this path. I don't, I don't want to be the person trying to stand something up to keep that lava from flowing and burning my house down. You know, I'm getting a hiccup out the way. When I see that volcano, you know, uh, you know, doing lava and lava coming out of it, and I'm and, and I'm downhill from it. Hey, man, I'm looking, I'm getting up out of here. This house is not important. You know, let me grab a few. Let me grab a few things that I think is important. The rest of it can burn in the fire, cause there's nothing else I can do about it. Nothing you can do about it when that lava shows up. Cause like I'm saying, you know, if you can bathe in lava and take a nice warm bath. Well, you're a good person, Dean. You'd be like, ooh, this is some nice warm water. When the Most High gets jealous, who can stand before his righteous anger? Everything is controlled by him. Because the Most High has poured his righteous indignation and fury upon his children, we should be asking the Most High this question. Psalm 79 and 1. It's a, it's a psalm of Asaph. Come on, Dominic. O God, to he that are come into thine inheritance, thy holy temple, have thy defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. Asaph saw the destruction of Jerusalem. This hadn't happened during the time of King David. He talking about when Titus and Vespasian, the Roman, the Roman generals came up against Jerusalem. The holy city was not destroyed during King David's and Solomon's time. Okay, come on. The dead body of servants have the they give it to be me unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of the saints, unto the beasts of the earth. The flesh, okay, the, the dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints, unto the beasts of the earth, as witnessed and written by Josephus' complete works. Chapter 5, page 888 and 889. The Roman soldiers killed thousands of innocent Jews and left them for meat, for the beast of the and of the fowl of the earth. Okay. The fact is, in Josephus, when Josephus rode in with uh, with Titus and, and Vespasian, he witnessed this. He witnessed the bodies piled high. He said that there was more blood than fire, and fire was burning everywhere. But he said it was more blood. There was not a space in Jerusalem that didn't have blood in it. And that the bodies was stacked up like mountains. And, and the soldiers was climbing up on these bodies, killing killing people that was trying to run away for the, with, with their lives. Nobody was getting away. Come on. Verse 3. Their blood have they shed like water around about Jerusalem. There was nothing to bury them. He's talking about something that was not seen during this time. He's this is a psalm of ASAP during the time of King David. This is a, like 1000 BCE, and he's talking about something that was going to happen in 70 AD. So the fact is, this is over a thousand years later that he's he's talking about this in his psalm. Come on. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision. A derision. Derision to them that are around the balance. Okay, now he's jumped even further ahead. Because right now, at this period right now, we are become a reproach to our neighbors. Nobody want black folks around them, Hispanic people. Because as soon as you move in, and I don't care how professional, what schools you went to, and all that stuff. When you move, when, when white folks see you and, and, and all these nations see you coming in, they ready to go. Oh, did you come to me? Oh no, they're gonna drop our property value, and we gotta get up out of here. Wow, we can <laughs> still sell our property for something, because you know, I don't want these these n words living around me. All right, come on. Seventy nine and five. Psalm seventy nine and five. How long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall that jealousy burn like fire? This is the question we should be asking. Father, how long will you be angry with us? Will your jealousy burn like fire forever? Because the fact is, if you guys understand 
who you are and understand where you come from, a nation of kings and priests, during the time of King David, this is the time, this is the thing that you should be asking yourself, Father, how long are you going to remain angry with us, with your children? Because the fact is, y'all don't understand who you are. You just think you're a bunch of slaves, gang, you know, a bunch of Negroes and, and thugs and all that other stuff. Not realizing that the Most High God has, has his hands on us and, and seeing where we are and, and the status and conditions we're in. We are the lowest of the low. Everywhere you go, see, it, it would be, this Bible would be part of, would we be correct if we were not cursed in every community that where there are black people at in, in, in the neighborhoods they live in. The Most High God said, curse will you be in the city and curse will you be in the fields. Every nation we go into, you're going to be see us in the, in the hoods, in the ghettos. How long, Father, will you be mad with us, angry with us for cheating on you? How long, how long before you turn your hand away from, from off of us? Take your hand off of us from beating us down. Maybe if we hearken to the voice of the Most High, God see what He has written and understand what is causing His jealousy. These are the things that we need to do. Come on, Ezekiel eight and one through eight and. Okay, just read there. And it became the past in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I stayed in my house. And the elders of Judah stayed, sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me. Okay, so Ezekiel was sitting in his house, and the elders of Judah sat before him, trying to hide their abomination. See, because, you know, they were sitting, behind, sitting with Ju uh, Ezekiel, the prophet, and they just filthy as hell, just sitting there. All righteous is and holy. Just you know how like y'all a lot of y'all go to church with all this stuff y'all had it, what y'all doing. Come on, you trying to sit around a prophet, a righteous man, that the most high God is just giving him sight to see all the wickedness that you're doing. <laughs> Come on, let's see what happened. And I beheld, and lo, the likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire and from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness. As the color of amber. Okay, so this this is talking about a black man because they talk about light, lightness, and amber. What color is amber? It's brown. brown. It's a brownish, dark, dark brownish type. So it was a a, a black man encased in, in light and light, and then at the at the from his from his waist down was fire. So he was in the spirit. Come on, the most high God. The most high came in the spirit. Come on. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my head. Okay, he took him by a lock. So I'm you know. Come on. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the vision of God to Jerusalem, the door the inner gate, the looking toward the north, where there was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked the jealousy. Okay, let's get to the understanding of this. He took Ezekiel by one of his locks in the inner gate toward the north into the temple. There was an image like that white Jesus that most of the Christian churches have on their walls, the image of jealousy. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. He said, thou shalt not bow down, serve no other gods before me. Thou shalt create no images, no likeness of, of anything under the earth, or anything above, or anything in the heavens. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity to, of, the, of the children, of the children to the tw uh, third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So he said, an image of jealousy, just like that white Jesus in y'all churches. You got on your walls, which provoked the Most High God to jealousy. Come on. Okay. And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then he said unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way towards the north. See, so, now I told you, okay, excuse me, Alex. He showed you the image of jealousy. Like that white Jesus on the wall. Now, he going to show you another. He going to show Ezekiel something else. Come on. So I lift up mine eyes towards the way toward the north. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Okay, another image of jealousy. Another picture that shouldn't have been in there. All these graven images and images of jealousy. 
All these images in the church proves, provokes the Most High to jealousy. This is what the Most High is showing Ezekiel the prophet. These images were in the temple of the Most High. Come on. He said furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? You see what they're doing? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. The great abominations. What could that be? If you look into the law, eating defiled foods, fornication, worshiping other gods, engraved images, etc. Come on. And he brought me to the doors of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. So he, they, they trying to hide this. So there's a hole in the wall. They trying to hide all this, this, this wickedness. Come on. Then said he unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold the door. Okay, so they, they're hiding this floor behind in the wall. They're like, you know, it, it, it's it's... It's so far in the wall that he had to dig in, and then there's a door. It's just way private. Come on. And, okay. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creepy things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel betrayed upon the wall round about. Hmm. You're talking about two things here. Let's let's get them out. What, what, what would you be some of the uh, uh, creepy things and abominable beasts? On court. Yeah, they they having all these shrimp, shrimp, lobster, uh, lobster meals and all these creepy, you know, cause that's that's what the creepy thing is. You eat you eat all abominable beast and stuff. You eat pork and you eat all kinds of pork and stuff in, in the in the church houses. And then you still got all these different uh, images and stuff on your wall and in your churches and on the murals in the windows and stuff. So this is what he's showing them. Is it is it is it of that time or is, uh, is it this time? So Ezekiel saw all the abominate vulnerable beasts and creeping things that were being eaten. And he also saw all the idols on the wall. He's describing what the churches do today. Serving pork, catfish, shrimp, chitlins, crab, lobster, crawfish, etc., with the picture of white Jesus on the wall. Believe it or not, abominable beasts and creeping things and idol images move the Most High God to jealousy. These are the things that you do in your churches every week. Moving the Most High God to jealousy. You know, like I'm saying, the fact is, what you eat, defiling your temple, yeah, that's an abomination. What you have on your walls in your church, the Most High God is a jealous God. So the fact is, when you think that a picture is it's not bad, you you know we don't worship that Jesus, but well, why you got it on the darn wall? Why you got that white Jesus on your cross? And, and thou shalt serve other gods which thou nor thy father has known. Even wood and stone. Why do you got that wooden cross up there on the back of your wall anyway? Because this is what the Most High God was saying in the curses. You're going to be serving other gods, which which neither thou nor thy father has known. Even wood, that wooden cross, and stone. These are the things that move the Most High God to jealousy. As a nation. Okay. All right. The Most High God through through His Word shows His children, His children, what moves Him to jealousy, and the consequences add them up, and it equals destruction. Y'all don't get it. He shows us all the stuff that that moves Him to jealousy, and them, and the consequences. You add both of them up, it's gonna always equal destruction, because He gonna come with vengeance. Because what it says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He comes with vengeance. You move him to jealousy. He, you know, it ain't like somebody getting jealous and turning back and walking off crying. He don't do that. You know, it, 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 his his vengeance is like you know, slave ship boat ride with a hundred million people dead. Like the Northern Kingdom getting totally destroyed. Seven, 70 million of the native uh, uh, Indians just just wiped out. 225 of, of, of the northern kingdom, 
225 million of the northern kingdom just getting totally wiped out. And, 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 and two, 400 years of slavery. That's his jealousy. And while, while we begging for forgiveness and begging for, please, please forgive us, but still being wicked. You know, most I got to get a pedicure and get his nails done and stuff. Like, man, y'all get out of my face with that. Uh, maybe when I finish this thousand year pedicure, I'll probably think about it. You know, because y'all get on, y'all, y'all piss me off for the last time. I'm tired of y'all. And when I come back next time, I'm killing a lot of y'all because y'all got to go. You got to go because you're not going to change. I don't see no change in you. Your daddy was wicked. You wicked. Your great granddaddy was wicked. His daddy was wicked. His daddy's daddy was wicked. Every time I every time I wake up, look at you. You are wicked. I'm just gonna just throw y'all in the fire myself. I don't see no change in you. So I don't know. You know the fact is, it's I, I'm I'm here. I'm trying to do my best to 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 show. You in the, through the spirit of what makes the Most High God jealous, and I want you to evaluate your relationship that you have with Him. What what you are doing to move Him to jealousy? But believe it or not, His laws don't go away. They will never go away. They won't. They won't go away. And when He takes the kingdom back from 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 this wickedness. It's going to be the law. It ain't going to be as do as you feel and, and what that stuff Creflo Dollar is preaching that, you know, you don't even have to do the Ten Commandments. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I, I saw that, him, him preaching that. That man is the devil. You don't even, matter of fact, you don't even have to do the Ten Commandments. Because if you do Ten, grace catches you. That's, that's what Creflo Dollar said. I, I thought on the video. Because, you know, grace, grace got you right there. You, know, you don't even have to do 10. And I'm just flipping through my Bible like, what the hell? Is, where did you get that from? Oh, geez, what, it, this in the Bible? And see, those those are the people that, that are, are leading y'all astray and they're the portion of hell that is reserved only for them. They have VIP reservations, you might say. All right. If you don't know who you are and what happened to your ancestors, then how can you understand that this Bible is talking about you and only you, Israel? Let's get to Ezekiel 23, starting at 25. <laughs> Yeah. And I'll set my jealousy against thee. We all we only talking about jealousy today, cause most like God say his name is jealous. And I want to show you what jealousy is. And they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take the oh, they shall take away thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword, and, and they shall take away thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. Okay. In all out of our captivities, our enemies dealt fiercely with us. They devoured us and are still devouring us. Come on. 26. They shall also destruct, strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. When the so-called white man tells the story of slavery, they would have you believe we were naked swinging from trees. Nope. The truth is, the Africans and the Arabs robbed us first, then sold us to the so-called white man. In the northern kingdom, the Span Spaniards robbed, killed, and murdered. So, no, we, we, we weren't naked when they found us. But because the Most High God said what he's going to do, because the Most High God said, you know what, since you didn't want to serve me, give me that. Give me that necklace. He, he, like I said, he don't, he don't come down personally himself, but he sent his enemies after you. And they do his bidding. Because when they see you, they strip you naked. Take your clothes from you. 
take your, all your jewelry away from you, and then sell you and tell a history story like, yeah, we found these Negroes uh, in Africa swinging off of trees like monkeys. We had to teach them everything. When, when, when it's vice versa, we taught them how to take a bath. We taught them perfumes and soaps and deodorants. Languages and stuff. Then when they got in power, they stripped us and put us in slavery. Not they, This is their way of showing appreciation. Yeah. We're going to give y'all a good gift. Slavery. All right, come on. 27. Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee, and thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt, so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them, nor remember, nor remember Egypt any more. Okay. This is describing the Israelites today. We cleave to the traditions and the gods of our oppressor. The Israelites during the time of Ezekiel the prophet had exited Egypt approximately 848 years ago. And the children of Israel were still worshiping their gods, corrupting themselves with the lewdness and whoredoms of the Egyptians. Even now, we are corrupting ourselves with the ordinances of, and gods of Esau, starting with the Greeks. What's wrong with us? During the time when we came out of Egypt, we knew that there was no other Elohim but the God of Israel. Because he did all of these miracles in, before us. We seeing the Red Sea parted on both sides water and we walking through. Seeing Leviathans and giant fish in the water and we walking through like, ooh, that's a big old fish. Man, give me a hook so I can grab that one and get, we can have a good meal on that one. You know, we seeing all the gods that the Egyptians had that the Most High God destroyed them. But we came out of Egypt, we still holding on to their gods, hiding them in the tents and stuff. All kinds of wicked stuff. 848 years later. And right now, same thing with the Greeks. All, all these sports and stuff that's being uh, set up in, in, in the thing. The Grecians started that with the discus. Romans carried it over. And, you know, American expanded. Expanded it and all these other, expanded with the soccer, the Football, the basketball, the baseball, and all this other stuff. They started this. There's some guys behind these sports, too, you, believe it or not. All right, come on. All right. Okay, 28. 28. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'll deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. This is clearly talking about Esau. Because we didn't have no dealing with Esau during this time. He said he's going to put us in the hand of them whom we hate us. Into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. Because they weren't around, living around us at the time. Before, before during the Ezekiel time, no. Esau wasn't in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in power. Come on, let's go to Lamentations. Uh, this is clearly talking about Esau. Let's go to Lamentations 5 and 2 to prove that. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. This is what we're going to be called after, after, after Esau came. Because every land that, that he conquered, we became aliens in that land, and, and, and they took over our kingdom, our, our inheritance. Our inheritance, our lands, even Jerusalem is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens, which we are now called in our own land. Because Jerusalem not theirs. You know, they, they got us all mixed max and max messed up to the point that they don't even, you know, they don't even want you to know that Jerusalem is your own land. It's our land. That's our land that they fighting over right now. All right. Ezekiel 23, 29. Okay. And they shall deal with thee hatefully and shall take away all thy labor. Mm. Come on. And shall leave uh, the naked and bare. And the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. Has Esau dealt with us hatefully? Working for free is taking away our labor. Because he took our labor away, they didn't give us no wages. Leaving us naked and bare, they definitely discovered the nakedness and whoredoms of many of our women during slavery. 
because they just raped and had their way with him. So, yeah, they discovered, they took away our land. What it said, and they shall deal with thee hatefully. Oh, when they beat you and split you apart, like the witness letter said, said to do to those slave owners, split them apart to reverse nature. Split one man apart and beat the crap out of the other ones to a damn near death. Ain't that dealing hatefully with a person? Then take away all of your labor, work you from sun to sundown for free, and leave thee naked and bare. Yeah, we, you know, we we had scraps and, and barely had clothes. Come on, verse thirty. Okay, I will do these things unto thee because thou hast gone on whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their idols. Because Israel cheated on the Most High God. Made him jealous. You see what he did to us? Cheating on the most high carries some heavy consequence. This is he's telling you why he's doing this to us. And y'all haven't evaluated this, haven't figured out what's wrong, what what can we do to fix this relationship? Why have we been groveling and telling the most high God we're sorry? Why have we started coming back to him and keeping his commandments and walking, trying to walk perfect like he told us to walk? And gave us that when he gave us his law, statutes, and commandments, so that we can be perfect like him. Why haven't we shown that we we're going to step in line and be a, a good, a good spouse? Because he says he's married to us, and he wants us to walk like us and do the things that he do. Why haven't we evaluated what's wrong in our relationship? But you claim that you love him. You know, y'all, y'all some hypocrites. Y'all talk. Yo, this is this is how most marriages are jacked up in today's society today, because you don't read the room right, you don't understand what your what your spouse uh, wants, you don't listen to your spouse. You, your spouse tells you things that that he or she wants you to do that you need to do, and you don't listen. And then you you know you go to complaining to your friend. I don't know what's wrong with why you don't why he or she don't do this, why she don't like that. I don't know what's wrong with what's causing all the problems. And he, and he and she just telling you flat what the, what the problem is. But you listen to, you're talking to your friend and listening to something else. Well, he must mean this. I'm putting it in writing. I'm showing you exactly what I want. The Most High God is telling you what he wants. And he's telling you, if you do this, this is what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> oh, I love my God. God is Bible. You don't love him. You do not love him. Based on the things that he's told you to do, and based on the things that he said he's going to do to you if you didn't do them, you didn't do them and he did them to you. You don't even know what he wants because you have no communication with him. He don't talk to you because you are, you're a sinner. You've been cheating on him for so long, he don't even want to talk to you. Because he tells you in John 9.31 that the most high, he hated, he, he listened, he had not sinners. But if you be a worshipful God and do his will, him he hear it. You don't do his will, so how in the world can he, can, does he uh, talk to you? He don't communicate with you. All right. Where we at? Um, I'll finish 30. So 30 be so okay, you finished 30. Because Israel cheated on the Most High God, made him jealous. You see what he did to us? Cheating on the Most High carried some heavy consequences. Know this, the Most High will reclaim his inheritance, Israel, not for us, but for his sake. Let's get to that term, time. Jordan, I want you to read this. Ezekiel 36, 1, and 1 through 11. All right, yeah, 1 through 11. Also, thou son of man, Prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy had said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Our enemies have claimed the holy land, Jerusalem, in their possession, and are acting proudly. Come on. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God. Because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, 
and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. Our enemies have swallowed us up in every country, made us desolate. That's why we're living in the slums and in the ghettos. That's desolation. Where we are in the slums in our lands, and we are in the heathen's possession who are talking proudly. Because right now, they make laws to put you in jail and, and, and sell you into slavery to do the bid of, of, of the people that had you in slavery. And they've been doing this ever since after slavery. All right, come on. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel. Ye he, mountains of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate waves and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a, became a prey in derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Okay, come on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea. Okay, you're talking about the heathen, all the, the residue of the heathen and all Idumea. All who? who what is Idumea? Edom. Edom is, Edom is, well, Idumea, Edom, Esau. All right, come on. Which which have appointed my land unto their possession. Okay, so we talking about a people that appointed their land, appointed the Most High God's land into their possession. Come on, with the joy of all their heart. Okay, with 1948 when they when they uh, took over uh, Israel, they was joyful and it, it was all their heart when they rolled into uh, to, uh, Jerusalem. Come on, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. That's what they did. The Most High God, fire and jealousy would be turned towards the heathens and all Adumia, that's that so-called white man, who have appointed the Most High God's land into their possession, being spiteful and proud, and in their spite causing war and death. Because this is what they're doing now, because there has not been any peace over there since, since this white man showed up. Come on. Verse 36, verse 6, I meant, 36 and 6, come on. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel. And say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy, and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their, their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches, and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. At this time, the Most High would turn against again to his children, just like in Isaiah 14 and 1. He was going to he's going to have mercy on us again in in the future. So so our our branches, the twelve tribes, are going to be successful again. Come on, verse nine. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you. And ye shall be tilled and sown. So when the Most High God returned to us, He gonna be for us, and we gonna be till, we gonna be successful and prosper, pros, pros, prosperous. Come over. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the city shall be inhabited, and the way shall be builded. And we ain't gonna do the building. Come on. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will note, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, this is going to be the time when all the other nations are going to be our servants. This is part of the stuff that people don't, oh, we all equal. Mm -hmm. Looks like God never taught equality upon this earth. We are <laughs> his children. Y'all his servants. He created y'all to, to work, to serve him, to, to serve us. It says it right here. See, it says it right here. Did anybody read that? Did anybody get it? Huh? Did anybody get that? Jordan, did you get it? Did you read You read it? Did you get it? Hmm? Yes. He, he said, and I will multiply upon you man and beast. So, our beast is going to be multiplied and the men, what they gonna be doing? 
What the beast gonna be doing? Killing man. No. That's not food. Men and beasts. He gonna multiply upon you men and beasts. And they shall increase and bring fruit. So they're gonna be prosper. We're gonna be prospered in, in prosperous in them. And I will sell you after your old estate because during this time, when, when during King David, everybody was out of service. During the time of the law, Leviticus 23, and I think it's like 17 or something. I, 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 I gotta find it, but we were, you know, it's written that we would abide from the heathen, you know, to a service, and they would be in our inheritance, not children in their <laughs> But we didn't we didn't put their their children in slavery like like they put us in slavery. We didn't go out and kill them and all that stuff and and, 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 and take their language and all that. They knew who they were when they were serving us. You know, but the fact was, yeah, it was in the it's in the law. You should buy from them. Buy their their children to work for you. Oh, it's it's gonna happen again. Y'all can hold on to y'all friends right now, but you know what? That's why I ain't holding on to none of this stuff right now because I don't want to be part, no part of it. So when the Most High God comes, I'm just going to be ready to get into place as to what he has for me already. I'm not going to be fighting the, the, the turning of the wheel. Most of y'all going to get in your own way and you're not going to see the kingdom because you don't know your Most High Elohim. You don't know who you were, who you are. Because you don't know this Bible and you don't know the things of this Bible that pertains to you that shows you who you were. And you get in your own way because you're going to be hugging on to your friends. No, those are my servants. Why are you hugging on to my servants? Get your butt back for I have the most high, tell the most high God on you and have you put to death. These are my servants. They're going to serve me. And their children going to serve me. I ain't building nothing. I'm not even more my own Lord. I'm cooking my own meals. They better be culinary chefs. You know how people do cooking shows? Oh, I'm going to have a couple of loaves in my kitchen. Happy to serve me. Call, call me master. Oh, yes. And like I said, you know, the most, high, the most High God has already reserved it for me. So what? So you know what? Those are the things I'm looking forward to. So I ain't, I ain't worried about this world. You know, y'all can have all your money and all your fancy car. Live the life you want to right now because when the, when the time comes, when, the, when that sky cracks open, everything going to be upside down. All you gl glamorizing today and all this stuff about Esau's world, keep glamorizing that. <clears throat> mm. The Most High will place us in a better position than we were before, as He did Job. Because you know what? During that time, the Most High God killed all of Job's children. In the beginning, Job went through a lot of stuff just because, you know, Satan was trying to prove to the Most High that. Job was going to forsake him and all that other stuff. Most high, let, let, let the devil have his way. Say, but don't kill him. He killed all Job's children. But at the end, the Most High God put Job in a better position than he was before. Gave him more children, multiplied him. Gave him more wealth. Because Job was righteous. Before this happens, so before the Most High God gives us all of this, that's going to be a cleansing first. So let's get to the cleansing part. Ezekiel 39, 17. Start there. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak of them to every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel. That ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Oh, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel. What the heck is he talking about the mountains, Dominic? Well, when uh, God, when Jesus 
What the heck are you talking about? You know, I was like, some amount of bodies. That's what he said. That's what Doc, no, that's what Doc said. Well, I think he, 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 what, he, he jumped before, he jumped before that, but the mount is, when, when the Most High God is talking about the mountains, he's talking about the leadership, the mountains of Israel. See, we're talking about the leaders of Israel. Even the great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel. You know, we're talking about the leaders. All these people that's leading us astray, they're going to be sacrificed too. It's not going to be just, just enemies and heathens. All, all these, all these uh, mountains, the mountains of Israel, going to be us, our people too. Come on. Uh, 18. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, and of all of them fatlings of Bashan. Okay, the Messiah said the same thing. Let's get Revelations 19 17. and 17. I, and I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together into the supper of the great God. He, he, he said the same thing. Y'all come together yourself. But see, the things that were not written in this book, it was written in this book, but Josephus witnessed these mountains of bodies that these Romans killed of the Most High God's children. Stacked them up like mountains and the birds came to feed, birds and beasts of the fields came and fed them. They didn't bury them. So I'm going to tell you, it was a great stench in Jerusalem for a long time because there was a lot of food that for the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field to come and feed off of. So the Most High God is bringing justice in the end. This is what he's doing right here because they, they did it to us. So if y'all talking about, oh, this, this is so unfair. When the Romans did it to us, it was even, even more unfair. They, them them, they went into a they went into a slaughtering rampage. They didn't even get orders from Caesar. They were just killing people. They, they couldn't they start killing. The Roman soldiers could not stop. They went into a bloodlust and just start slashing, killing women, children, old folks, everybody. They couldn't stop killing. They had stacks and stacks and stacks of stacks of bodies everywhere. That land was that land was polluted for a long time because them soldiers didn't stand around and bury nobody. They left them bodies stacked up. Now this is the most high God now saying, we finna do the same thing to all of y'all cause y'all gonna feed off all of these bodies that our that that uh the the the, the birds and the and the beasts of the fields fed off of our people because there were there were there were uh, a prince and all that stuff in these people. Come on. 18. That you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of cats, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So they're gonna be us in there too, because what you know, we are not, we are not free. We still bond men. We're still slave men, thinking we're free. So the Most High God is talking about, I'm gonna kill a lot of people, including Israel. All right, among the dead will include two thirds of Israel. Esau and some of the heathens who killed with the sword. Come on. Ezekiel 39 19. And he shall eat fat till you be full, and drink blood till you be drunken, of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled in my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. Because these are the men that are going to come out and try to, try to uh, fight the Messiah when he shows up. Come on. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. This, this is why in, in, in Isaiah 14, and the people shall cleave unto Israel, because when they see this happening right here, they're going to be scared as hell. Don't y'all think they're going to be fear upon, upon earth? Because when, when they see all the people that the Most High God is killing, and he killing all them people, they're going to find everybody with a friend's shirt, a, a, a friend shirt on, and they're going to be looking for We're going to stay with you. Can we stay with you? They're going to they gonna, they gonna be cleaving to us. Oh, we go where you go. If you walk down that street, we following him. Because when all this stuff is happening, them people going to be scared. Come on. Okay. 
22. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And this is when all Israel would know that the Most High God is the Elohim of Israel and none else. Come on. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore I hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. All the heathens who didn't want to be around us Call us all kinds of names, thinking they were superior to us. This day, they would know why we were beneath them. Not because they were superior, because we were being punished for our sin and transgressions against our Elohim. They're going to know that day. They are going to know that day. And all of that superiority thinking in their mind, it's going to be wiped away. They're going to be brokenhearted in the heart. Oh, I thought they was, they, I thought they was a lower to... No, no. We had a, we had the most powerful Elohim, and he was pissed off with us. Now y'all know. Y'all was y'all was born to be our servants. Put your maid hat on because you're gonna need it. You got dusting to do tomorrow. You gotta make my coffee. Got y'all? Oh, y'all y'all put your. Put your put your clothes on and go out there and get that whole shovel. It's gonna be some 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 calluses in the morning in, in the evening. Cause y'all gonna have y'all gonna be gonna be digging in that field. All right. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God: Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. And will be jealous for my holy name. And will be jealous for my holy name. You do anything to make my children jealous? Or you do anything to make my holy name jealous? Which we all are his? He gonna be jealous for us. Now, he gonna be jealous against us. He gonna be jealous for us. Y'all don't want him to be jealous for us. Because he be jealous for his holy name. When the Most High God become jealous for his holy name. Not jealous against us because we're so foolish and stupid. I'm, I'm, try, I'm in the spirit trying to help you guys to understand. When this time come, you want to be keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. And understanding that the Most High God is, is your God and your God alone. Your Elohim is, is nothing else. So... Even when he get when you get if you are to get to this point right here when he has destroyed the nations and destroyed the two thirds of Israel, where where you gonna be? Are you gonna be part of that one third? Are you gonna be part of that two thirds? Because two thirds of y'all gonna have to go. Most High God is not gonna establish Israel with with you wicked people who 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 say I love my Jesus and every every Christmas you got you got four Christmas trees in your house. Every Halloween, you're doing trick-or-treating. and Every Valentine's Day, you, you're getting hearts and candy and giving, giving your girlfriend, you know, that's a, that's a sin, and, and, and you give your girlfriend all kinds of gifts. Okay. But you love your God, right? Going to church on Sunday, wrong day. Don't even know how to worship your Elohim. All right. Let's... Are we, are we, have we finished? Um, yeah. The Most High God would be jealous for his holy name, his inheritance. Let's, let's identify who his inheritance is. Okay. Deuteronomy 32 and 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now that you know what makes the Most High God jealous, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You know what makes him jealous. I just told you. I'm going I'm to I'm summarize it up these, with these things. Stop defiling. That's number one. Stop defiling his holy place of worship with idolatrous images and abominable food, dress and appearance, bald heads, no beards, women in pants, fresh tattoos, etc., this is what Ezekiel was talking about when the Most High God showed him in Ezekiel. 
I think it was Ezekiel 8. Uh, Start from 2 all the way down to like 10. That the Most High God was showing Ezekiel these things that we were doing. All the creepy things and abominable abominations that were in the temple. And the, and the, and what is it? In the face of uh, the, uh, what, what, what do you call it? The face of, uh, in the seat of jealousy, the place of jealousy or something. It was an image of jealousy on the wall. Stop with that. Number two, stop celebrating all these holidays going after other gods. Because that's what these holidays do. Leviticus 23 tells you all the, the celebrations, most of the celebrations during that time. You don't know what to celebrate. You don't even do the Sabbath days. This is the covenant that, that the Most High God established with her, with us, his children, for his marriage. His creation, he gave it to us because it was, it was special to him. That was like his ring. That was like a wedding ring that he gave us this, in Sabbath days. He, gave, he, he put the ring on us to say, this is special to me. This is my Sabbath day. I want y'all to keep it because... This is this is the thing that I keep. This is the seven the six days I did all my work and I rested this day, making it separate, holy, and I want y'all to have that day. This is his marriage he made with us. He didn't make this with nobody else, so everybody else can do that. They're not his children. We are. Y'all don't, don't even keep that one. That's a special day he made for us. He tells us it's a special day. It's a covenant. Number three, stop with the lewdness and whoredoms of the heathen. You know, if, if, if the heathen decided that they want to put every man in a dress, y'all don't have to follow that. If the, the people of Israel should not be wearing dresses, should not be bald in their heads, should not be cross-dressing. You know, just because they make they make it a, a lawful for a woman to walk around with her panties and her bra on and with some high heels or some sneakers on, that ain't for Israel. Because I'm gonna tell you, the next 10, 20 years, it's gonna be damn near that. It's almost there now. Number four, and this should be at the top. Keep the commandments. This will fix one marriage. This was fix our marriage with the Most High God. Let's keep the commandments. Start walking as he walked. This, this, would, this would fix everything. Walk as he walked. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And, and, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself is, is, to, is to do the love of the Most High God is keeping his commandments. It's all one circle. So if you love the Most High God, you love each other, who you see every day. The commandments will show love to your brothers and sisters and your family and everybody else upon the block, even the heathens. Because, you know, you, you know the heathens hate you, so if, in order for you to love yourself, you got to show, you got to show respect to them. You got to respect them because you know they're waiting to kill you. So, in all honesty, Show love to them too, because the fact is, they can't wait to kill you. Ain't ain't say join up with them. But hope y'all been edified. Got some out of this this topic. The most I got named is jealous. That was the topic. And I, don't, I want y'all to reevaluate your relationship that you claim to have with the most I got. Knowing the things that we have been through because of our wickedness and our idolatrous ways. Also, let me plug my uh, YouTube and my Facebook channels. My YouTube channel is In The Truth, I-N-T-H-E-T-R-U-T-H. -E and my Facebook channel is at the at, at sign. Live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, P-L-A-S-S, -S, one word. Welcome.
feel free to subscribe, join, or follow. If you want to leave any comments, appreciate it. But if you want to be negative, I'll just remove you because you know the time is of, of uh, is urgent. If you have a doctrine that you're following and you know you, you don't understand, you don't see it. Hey, it's not for everybody because you know I'm only I'm only after the same thing that most the Messiah was after. The, you know, M Messiah said, "My children hear my hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me." I know them and they follow me. I'm only after the sheep that hear the voice of the Most High God. Most of this stuff is not for everybody. So if it's not for you and you got you have a, a evil, uh, you know, have some evil toward it, it ain't for you, brother, or sister, brother, or sister. Keep it moving. You know, it's not for you. But anyway, hope you guys been edified. And with that, family and friends, shalom. Shalom.